All right, remember this Antifa <laughs> protest? Away. That's right. Prote protest leader and middle school teacher. She's a middle school teacher who got arrested for assault. Take a look. Come here now. Middle school teacher. Well, now she's being hit where it hurts. Former UC Berkeley pre College Republican president Troy Warden is suing Yvette Falarca for $100,000 in damages. He claims she threatened him and limited his right to free speech. Well, Mark Moisier is the attorney representing Troy Warden, and he joins us now. Hey, Mark. Good morning, Mark. Hey, thank you for having me. So you're seeking $100,000 uh, worth of damages, alleging assault, harass or alleging harassment uh, on college campus, Troy is. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Tell us about some of the harassment he is facing, or he has faced. Okay, well, yes. Well, Yvette Falarca actually sued uh, Troy Warden, got a civil harassment restraining order, which restricted his First Amendment rights and his Second Amendment rights, plus restricted his ability to get around the campus and made it impossible for him to do his job as Berkeley College Republican. In order to get this temporary restraining order, she had to lie to the courts and, you know, said that Troy said things that we had video evidence of their encounters, which he never th said. And she uh, alleged events that occurred at certain times and dates. And the school uh, showed that uh, Troy was at work during those times. So she lied to the courts, got this temporary restraining order, the purpose of which was to, so that she could have her meetings to disrupt mm -hmm. the Ben Shapiro event that was going on in August. And uh, we are now counter suing her back for uh, damages and we're suing her attorneys for sanctions for, for bringing this frivolous action. So, uh, Mark, we've seen, we've been showing videos of Yvette. We also showed the video of her punching a protester. That was not your client, Troy Warden. But we will note that uh, Yvette is the leader of a group called By Any Means Necessary, an Antifa or, or anti-fascist group, as she says. Well, by any means necessary, according to her, means punching people at events if necessary. Uh, what, what, where, do you, where do you believe this will go? Uh, ultimately, your, your client is, is suing because uh, he doesn't want to be assaulted, wants the ability to have free speech as a college Republican at Berkeley. Uh, what, what's your hope, hopeful outcome on this? Well, you know, as you said earlier, hit them where it hurts in their pocketbooks. And, you know, we're not just going after her, we're going against her attorneys because her attorneys are actually, you know, Shanta Driver is one of the national leaders for the organization by any means necessary. So we're uh, going against the organization. This was a clear plot by the organization by any means necessary to restrict the Berkeley College Republicans because they did not like the speech that they were given. Yvette Florica has said uh, that she thinks it's self-defense to beat up somebody who she calls a fascist, and she <laughs> is calling the Berkeley College Republicans fascists. So by implication, she thinks it's okay to beat up college Republicans. Uh, this all ar arose from a meeting that she was having where she was planning on disrupting the Ben Shapiro event. Mm -hmm. And when the Berkeley College Republicans showed up to try to discuss it with her, they tried to use force to keep the Berkeley College Republicans from attending their meeting where they intended to disrupt the event. Yeah. And, and, and Mark, I, I want to get your reaction from a statement from her attorney to the East Bay Times uh, in quote, this motion is this motion is his attempt to use the courts to continue stalking, uh, to continue stalking Miss Florica. The First Amendment does not give Warden the right to stalk people or to violate restraining order and be in Florica's face and take video of her for 30 minutes, which Warden did after the court commanded him to stay away. So your response to that? Well, I, it's transference. They're they're basically blaming uh, Troy Warden for what for the act actions that they themselves are doing. Uh, the allegation that he violated a uh, restraining order actually came out in court that she basically served him when he was you know she obtained a temporary restraining order, waited till he was like within twenty feet of her, and then then had one of her friends serve it. You know, based upon the interaction between the team, he just, mm -hmm. it was like paper thrown at him. He said, let's call the police over here. And it took the police about a half hour to come over. Uh, 
And when the police came over and said, yes, this is, you know, called it in, yes, this is a uh, temporary restraining order, he left. But it, it's a complete fabrication or mis, you know, misinterpretation of the sure. truth, which is their tactics, the Scalinsky tactics, you know, just don't, uh, you know, lie, cheat, tell a lie loud enough, long enough, hopefully people will believe it. Sure. I mean, if you have a group called by any means necessary and then you use violent means, why are you going to be surprised if you're held to account for it? Uh, Mark Muser, attorney representing Troy Warden, thanks for being thanks, on the program Mark. this morning. Thank you.